So what are your names and what are you guys in for? Name is James, robbed the bank, took two puppies as hostage, almost got away if the puppies didn't make a peace stop, three years and no parole. Whoa, that's some serious crime. My name is Peter, I embezzled money from my job to get back at my boss for sleeping with my wife. Two years, parole in nine months. Sorry bro to hear about your wife. How about you, what are you in for? Uh, me, it's nothing. Well, my name is Christian and the judge sent me for some stupid reason, all because I was at the plant nursery for this limited edition Hoya release. I was there doing my thing, first in line, got the Hoya I wanted. Next thing you know, this guy goes into my basket, snatches it and runs away. So I'm like, no freaking way, ran after him, tackled him, wouldn't let go of my damn Hoya. Next thing you know, he's on a stretcher being taken to a hospital with a broken arm and a bloody well, face. So you put someone in a hospital over a houseplant? It wasn't just any houseplant. It was uh, a Hoya AH silver ghost. It was very rare, okay? Damn. Hey guys, I just want to set a reminder to make sure that you don't use any form of violence, especially when it comes to plant shopping or any of that stuff. Always use your words, be kind to each other, and uh, have fun along the way. Let me get out of this outfit and then we'll get this video started. There you go, much better. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. For those who's new, my name is Christian, and I'm not a botanist or a horticulturist by any means. I'm just a regular guy who happens to love plants, who's crazy about them, who's been collecting them for a few years. And in the past year, I've been getting into a lot of Hoyas lately. So in today's video, I wanna show you guys the Hoya haul I did. I technically did this for my store, but at the same time, I also wanted these Hoyas in my own personal collection because I don't have them yet. And currently right now, I have about 14 different type of Hoyas. Hoyas are great. I think everyone should have a Hoya. I think they're easy to care for. They're perfect for beginners. And there's so many varieties to choose from. There's probably nearly over 300 species, I would say. And like I said, I have 14 right now in my collection. I have the Carnosa Crimson Princess, the Macrophylla Alba Marginita, Ovavada Variegata, the Carii Variegata, Da Nang Vietnam, Parasitica Splash, Matilde Splash, Hoya Philippines, Hoya Densifolia, Hoya Gigas, aka Big Ass, I like to call it, uh, SP Doi Tung, the CV Pacharawale, the Griffin Thai, and the Angleriana. So those are the current Hoyas in my collection right now. And as you guys can see, they're somewhat different from each other. Some are variegated while others are splash, smaller leaves, big leaf, you know, tricolor, a veiny leaf. Uh, really, really cool to have and so fun to collect. I seriously think they're like Pokemons. You know, once you have one of them, you gotta collect them all. And that's pretty much where it led me to kind of get these Hoyas. In particular, I'm really starting to lean towards more of these bigger leaf Hoyas with a lot of veins like this Da Nang Vietnam, uh, which is what pretty much inspired me to kind of choose these Hoyas for my shop. Partly because I don't really see them being sold uh, anywhere locally or in any online shops. So I really did want to add Hoyas because like I said, I think everyone should have a Hoya. So I am going to introduce these seven Hoyas I got. Before I introduce you guys to the new Hoyas I added, I do just want to say that I'm not actually quite certain if I actually classified these guys correctly because I did mix up the names when I was unpacking them. So I had to actually look online, look on social media to reference the Hoya I have to a picture and see if I was right about that or not. So most likely I probably will be wrong, but if there's any of you guys who are Hoya specialists or botanists or you know horticulturists, comment below and let's have a conversation because you know I also want to learn from you guys and I'm sure a lot of people out there can also appreciate uh, you know the correct <laughs> labels for these Hoyas because some of them are really tricky to identify just by looking at the leaf because the leaf can vary quite a bit. And this goes for most houseplants. It can vary quite a bit depending on obviously the growing conditions, you know, the lighting, humidity, uh, all of that stuff. And really one way to tell with Hoyas is based on their blooms or their flowers. Unfortunately, mine are not blooming at all right now. And even if they were blooming, I'd probably need like a microscope to actually be able to tell the difference on some of the blooms to really identify what type of Hoya this is but I did try my best. So without further ado, let's get this Hoya haul started. I want to start with the, ta-da, the Macrophylla Big Leaf. Now, I already do have a Macrophylla that you guys saw earlier. It's a bit more narrow and it's a bit more variegated. This is a little bit wider and more of that big leaf. Now, I do think this is technically green. I don't think it's variegated. It is only this color because it is a bit sun stress. And that's one thing that's cool about Hoyas is when they do get sun stress, they do pop these like reddish 
uh, color that you see on this macrophylla right now. Uh, the other thing too I also do want to say is this might not actually be a macrophylla. It might be a latifolia. There is a bit of confusion with the information that's out there right now. I know uh, Mineral from Bassus Leaf did like a comparison or information about latifolia and macrophylla and uh, why people are confused by it. So definitely check that video for more information. I can't explain it right now to be quite honest. All I know is it's beautiful, it's big, and I like it. So that is the first Hoya I got. Now the next Hoya I got are also big leaf type of Hoyas. And uh, as I was mentioning about the macrophylla, this was actually labeled as the, ta-da, latifolia. So again, I don't know if this is actually a true latifolia or not, but when I compare the two between this and the macrophylla, the one thing I noticed difference with this is it doesn't have that uh, striking pattern or veins that a macrophylla has. Now that could be because of the growing condition this was in. So that can also vary the leaf as I was mentioning uh, because I did see a few latifolias that were marked as latifolia uh, have a similar pattern to this uh, macrophylla that you guys see here. So very hard for me to tell uh, the difference once this is probably in its uh, true form to be quite honest. But for now, the one thing I do notice is, again, it doesn't have that striking patterns. It's a little bit more flush. Uh, it is a little bit more, um, even the shape of the leaf can also vary because I've seen ones that are a little bit wider and these, this is a little bit more longer and uh, a bit more narrow. So, but this was labeled as a latifolia. Again, for those of you guys who are Hoya specialists, uh, comment below and let me know if uh, these are mislabeled or if I have them uh, correctly labeled. Uh, so the next Hoya I got are probably going to cause a bit more confusion uh, for some of you guys because I'm still scratching my head to try and tell the difference, but I'm pretty sure based on the information that's out there online, which can also be correct or not, that I think I was able to uh, classify and differentiate which is which. So let's start off with the, ta-da, the Hoya Calisophila. So it is one of those long leaves crazy veins, really, really liking it, similar to the Da Nang Vietnam that I got. And the Calisophila was one I really wanted to add to my list, along with the rest I'm gonna show you guys. But when I put them side by side, they do quite look very similar and very, very hard to tell them apart. So for me, the way I, de I determined this was a Calisophila is just the way the veins are more, um, not necessarily prominent, as crazy as like, say, a Finlay Sony eye that I'm gonna show you guys uh, shortly here. Uh, you know what, let's take a look at that and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. So this is a Finlay Sony eye, uh, and you guys can see when I put it side-by-side -side between a Calistophila uh, that the veins are slightly different, but really, really hard to tell still, you know, especially when you look at it uh, quickly uh, because they can look quite similar and some will even argue and debate down there in the comment section uh, if you guys think, uh, you know, this is a Calistophila and this is a Finlay Sony eye, or it could be completely something else because there are so many freaking varieties when it comes to Hoyas. And like I said, the growing condition uh, they, they're grown in can really vary the way the leaves look and the way the veins look. So, uh, but nonetheless, I have both now in my collection and we can all agree that they're beautiful, okay? So <laughs> next one on the list is one I also wanted to get and I've been trying to hunt for this one for a while. It's so hard to find in any uh, local shops here in Canada or in Toronto and even online as well, I can't really find it. So it is the, ta-da, the Meridithi. 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 Ta-da, the Hoya Meridithi. I think I pronounced that one correctly, or Meredith. But again, another one of those big leaf, long leaf, veiny Hoyas. And this one, you can see that the veins are a lot more crazy and wild. It's not just, you know, like on the side, it's pretty much throughout its leaf. And the one thing I also notice is the veins tend to be a lot more raised. Uh, it's not as smooth uh, as like, say, a Calistophila or the Finlay Sonii. Uh, I do find it to be a little bit more uh, bumpy. And uh, yeah, really cool. And look how massive this leaf is. Like I was surprised when I opened this up, how huge this one is because I, like I said, I couldn't find this one at all online. So really, really happy to add it to the collection. And uh, again, comment below and let me know if you guys think this is a Meredith eye or it can be something else. But for now, based on how this looks, the pictures I was looking online on Instagram, which also can be wrong, uh, is called a Meredith eye. So that is that. Now the next Hoya I got, I remember picking this because it's actually a cultivar of the Meridithii. Oh, there you go, I pronounced it correctly, I think. Or in the <laughs> Finlay Sonii is, um, is a combination of these two is actually this. It is the, ta-da, 
the Irina. So this is a Hoya Irina. And again, you know, first glance, it may look very similar to the Finlay Sonii and even maybe the Clistophylla and the Meridithii. But as I mentioned, this is technically a cultivar of the Meridithii and the Finlay Sonii based on what I read. And it does have that similar pattern on the veins uh, to the Meridithii, but it has also the kind of the colors of say the uh, Finlay Sonii. But who knows, maybe this could be completely different Hoya, oh yeah. but yes, I do have this now in my collection and uh, really happy about that one. The next one I'm gonna share with you guys is one I can actually tell apart from the rest. It is the, ta-da, the Clementiorum. So this one is pretty cool because it has kind of this like dagger-like leaf and the edges of the leaf aren't smooth, it's pretty rugged. In addition, like I also find there's a lot more grooves and uh, kind of an indent on the front of the leaf. And then you have these like crazy veins that just pop and the color as well too is slightly different. So this one is actually one of my favorites. I, I just love this dagger style like Hoya. And uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty neat. And uh, I can't wait to see how the blooms look on these. So I'm actually determined to make all my Hoyas bloom this year. Uh, I've been trying to research on how to go about doing that because I've only had a couple of my Hoyas bloom, the Hoya Matilde and the Angleriana, but I really want to get everyone blooming like at the same time and then check to see what their flowers look like, uh, the different scents that they'll uh, produce and whatnot. Now, the last Hoya I added to my collection is the, ta-da, the Hoya SP Tangamus, I think is how you pronounce it. But again, another one of those big leaf uh, Hoya that has a lot of veins. This one isn't as like elongated or narrow like the Calisophila or the Finlay Sonii. Uh, it's a little bit more wider and a bit more oval shape, which I think is pretty cool and pretty unique. So I'm really happy to add this to the collection along with the rest over here. And as you guys can see with the footage right here, side by side, one after the other, that at first, you know, quick glance, they may all look very similar, but the more you actually take a look at them, you know, you can somewhat tell them apart. But again, I may have mislabeled some of these, so correct me if I'm wrong and let the community know. Uh, let's all learn from each other. Now, the one thing I've learned when it comes to Hoyas in terms of care for them is they're epiphytes, right? So they actually don't need a lot of um, potting medium, to be quite honest, to thrive and grow. I have mostly all of mine in moss. If it's not in moss, in a very chunky potting medium like cacti soil with a lot of perlite pumice and some orchid bark. So very, very airy. I allow the water for the most part to dry in between waterings, except when there's new growth that's happening. So whenever I see a new leaf, I actually don't allow the soil to dry out completely or be sitting in dry potting medium for long periods of time because what I often find when there's new leaves growing is they will just fall off the vine and will not grow. Now I do have most of mine upstairs in my bedroom, so they do get a lot of that bright indirect light, south-facing light, but they can tolerate more of the medium and some even more in the low light as well. In terms of humidity, my relative humidity in my bedroom is about like 30%. Uh, and about 20% during the winter time. So they're fine with that type of humidity, but you know, some can obviously use a bit more humidity, like around 50%. So I will have most of the ones that will be for the shop in a greenhouse uh, with the right lighting and just proper humidity, just to make sure that they are gonna be thriving uh, before they go into their new home. Now, when it comes to propagating Hoyas, I think they are one of the easiest houseplants to propagate. You simply take a cutting of the vine, you stick it in water, give it the right lighting condition. And within a few weeks, you should start to see roots. You can then plant that directly into sphagnum moss or a very chunky potting medium. When it comes to pests, the only common pests I've ever experienced with my Hoyas are actually mealybugs. One year on my Carnosa Crimson Princess and uh, one year on my uh, Angleriana. But other than that, I've never experienced any other type of pests. And mealybugs are so easy to get rid of, especially if you catch them on time. And they tend to really go for those semi succulent or succulent like plants. So that is the only thing I noticed with my Hoyas. And those are just some of the reasons why I think Hoyas are perfect for beginners. Not only are they easy to care for, they are very low maintenance, easy to propagate. In addition, there's so many varieties to choose from. Whether you're more into the foliage or maybe you're more into the blooms, that's one thing that's cool about Hoyas as well, is they also produce beautiful blooms that's uniquely different from each other and they also smell pretty good. So if you don't have a Hoya yet in your collection, definitely seek one out. A lot of common Hoyas right now you can find. The Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess, you can usually find them at your big box store. It was actually my first Hoya I ever got and they're pretty cool. And uh, hopefully you guys can find a Macrophylla. I know a few years back they were a little bit easier to find. Now I think they're a little bit harder, but those are also pretty cool. As as well but uh yeah there's so many to choose from so you can never go wrong with any hoya you pick so that's pretty much it hopefully you guys enjoyed this little hoya haul and learned something or two and i can't wait to read the comments and see how you guys classify these or identify them 
uh, because I do also want to learn from you guys. And let me know as well if any of these Hoyas interest you, uh, which ones you have in your collections, which ones you want to add in your collection. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the rest of your weekend and we'll see you guys soon. Peace.